You think you know Hollywood secrets, but what if the glitz and glamour conceal a dark, sinister underbelly? As you peel back the layers, you'll uncover hidden rituals, occult symbols, and eerie connections that will send chills down your spine. What if the entertainment you love is steeped in darkness, entwined with the very forces of evil? Prepare to be haunted by the terrifying truths lurking behind the silver screen, where fame and fortune come with a chilling price. Chapter 1. The Dark Side of Fame Occult Symbols in Hollywood Films The glittering lights of Hollywood have always had a darker shadow, one cast not just by the scandals and heartbreaks of its stars, but by the symbols that lurk just beneath the surface of its films. It's easy to dismiss these things, a pyramid here, an all-seeing eye there, as coincidence. Design choices meant to intrigue, but the truth is far more unsettling. Beneath the carefully crafted veneer of entertainment lies a hidden layer, a language of the occult that has infiltrated Hollywood's biggest productions, leaving a trail of symbols and whispered secrets that, once noticed, can never be unseen. Stanley Kubrick's eyes wide shut is perhaps the most glaring example of this eerie undercurrent. The film, released just days before Kubrick's unexpected death, has long been rumored to be an expose of secret societies operating within the highest echelons of power. In Eyes Wide Shut, Tom Cruise's character, Dr. Bill Harford, stumbles into a bizarre, ritualistic gathering of masked elites. While the film's plot revolves around Harford's dangerous misadventures into a world he doesn't understand, the symbolism in the movie is undeniable. Kubrick, known for his meticulous attention to detail, never left anything in his films by accident. The elaborate mass ball in the film features guests in occult attire, their identities concealed behind Venetian masks. The rituals that unfold before Harford's eyes, a strange, hypnotic chant in the background, echo the practices of secret orders that have long been rumored to exist within the shadows of Hollywood's elite. According to some insiders, Kubrick had come too close to revealing too much leading to his untimely demise. After all, he had control over every aspect of the film, except the final cut, which many believe was altered after his death to remove more direct references to these secret societies. The unsettling imagery doesn't end with eyes wide shut. Over the years, films and music videos have increasingly featured symbols that can be traced back to occult practices. The all-seeing eye, often placed atop a pyramid or suspended in a starburst of light, is one of the most persistent and recognizable symbols. In films such as National Treasure and even children's media like The Simpsons, this symbol pops up again and again, as if to remind viewers of who might really be watching. Some of the most disconcerting theories revolve around the seemingly innocuous world of Disney. What could be more innocent than the magical realms of The Lion King, Aladdin, and Frozen? But lurking behind the princesses and talking animals, critics have pointed out what they claim to be subtle occult symbolism, particularly in Disney's animated films. For instance, in The Lion King, the word sex reportedly appears in the sky of one scene, formed by swirling dust. While Disney has explained it away as merely a coincidence, others have pointed to this as evidence of subliminal messaging, a tactic often associated with occult influence. The most pervasive of these Disney theories connects their films to the Freemasons and other secret societies that supposedly have had their hands in Hollywood's pockets since its inception. Certain gestures and images, an okay, hand sign covering one eye, triangles or pyramids, suns and moons, are believed to be markers of allegiance to these hidden orders. The Princess and the Frog, for example, has been criticized for featuring occult imagery associated with voodoo and magic and critics claim this is no mere artistic choice. Rather, it serves as yet another entry point for normalizing these ideas. It's not just in films, though. The music industry has been accused of carrying on this dark tradition. In the music videos of megastars like Jay-Z, Rihanna, and Beyonce, occult imagery runs rampant. Jay-Z, in particular, has been photographed wearing clothing emblazoned with the slogan, Do What Thou Wilt a direct quote from infamous occultist Aleister Crowley. Crowley, a figure steeped in dark rituals and satanic teachings, preached self-indulgence as the ultimate human pursuit. Jay-Z's music videos often include symbols associated with the Illuminati, 
including the all-seeing eye and pyramid imagery. Rihanna, too, has faced accusations of using occult imagery in her work. In her video for Umbrella, she appears under a pyramid of light, her body contorted into a shape resembling the all-seeing eye. Critics argue that these images, paired with lyrical content hinting at themes of control and submission, are subtle nods to her supposed involvement with these hidden powers. Beyonce's formation and Lemonade projects, both rich with esoteric symbols, are often cited as further evidence of this occultic influence. But what's most chilling is that these symbols don't always stay hidden. In interviews with set designers, costume makers, and production staff, some have quietly admitted that the use of these symbols is deliberate. Take, for example, the work of Hollywood set designer E.S. Devlin, who has collaborated with some of the biggest names in the music industry. While many of her designs are breathtaking, Devlin has acknowledged the use of esoteric symbols in her work, often claiming they were requested by higher-ups. In an interview with a lesser-known production assistant, who worked on a high-profile music video in the early 2010s, the assistant claimed, we were told to incorporate triangles and a lot of eye motifs. It was specific and non-negotiable. Nobody questioned it. The question remains, why? What purpose do these symbols serve in the films and shows we consume, often without a second thought? Skeptics might dismiss it as mere coincidence or harmless creative choices, but others aren't so sure. To those who believe, the constant presence of these images is proof of something far more sinister, an ongoing conditioning of the masses, a slow unveiling of a hidden agenda that ties the fame and fortune of Hollywood stars to something much darker. As more and more insiders come forward with their stories, the whispers grow louder, the rumors more persistent. Hollywood is not just a place where dreams come true. It's a playground for the occult, where fame and influence are but masks worn by those who pull the strings behind the scenes. With every film, every music video, and every award show, we are being shown the signs, whether we want to see them or not. The question is, are we paying attention? Or are we content to be entertained? oblivious to the dark side of fame that has always been there. Hiding in plain sight? Chapter 2. Secret Societies and Hollywood Elites The glamour of Hollywood has always dazzled, but behind the allure of the silver screen lurks something far more sinister. An undercurrent of secret societies, hidden rituals, and dark, shadowy alliances that have entangled Hollywood's most powerful figures. While the glitz blinds the average viewer, Whispers of Freemasons, Skull and Bones, and other clandestine organizations quietly infiltrate the upper echelons of fame. These are not idle speculations, but documented facts, creeping out from the corners of interviews and public statements, shedding light on the dark reality behind the fame. One of the most chilling accounts comes from actor Johnny Depp. Known for his eccentric roles and odd persona, Depp has occasionally let slip mentions of secret societies operating within Hollywood. In interviews, he has alluded to the invisible forces that shape careers and control the industry from behind the scenes. In one particularly eerie moment, Depp mentioned, there are forces that people can't understand. You could call them secret societies, but they're real. Depp's statement, delivered with a casual nonchalance, hints at knowledge of something far darker than the average person could imagine. In another interview with Rolling Stone, Depp joked that his success may have been preordained saying, maybe there's a secret handshake, I don't know. It's not just vague statements from actors that hint at Hollywood's dark underbelly. The ties to Freemasonry, the ancient, secretive society rumored to have deep connections with the world's most powerful, are far more concrete. Numerous celebrities, from Elvis Presley to Brad Pitt, have been seen wearing Masonic symbols or engaging in gestures often associated with these hidden orders. The all-seeing eye, a powerful symbol of Freemasonry, appears not just in films and music videos, but is often worn by celebrities themselves, on jewelry, clothing, and tattoos. In one notable example, rapper Jay-Z has been photographed wearing a large ring bearing the unmistakable Masonic compass and square, a symbol that has long been associated with the fraternal organization. Jay-Z's connection to Freemasonry runs even deeper. His clothing line, Rokaware, once featured t-shirts adorned with the phrase master of the craft, a term used among masons to signify one who has attained high ranks in the order. The symbolism doesn't stop there. 
Jay-Z's frequent use of the pyramid hand sign, which he claims represents his record label, Rock Nation, eerily mirrors the Masonic pyramid topped with the all-seeing eye, a sign used by many secret societies to signal control and enlightenment. These symbols of Freemasonry are far from accidental. Brad Pitt, in interviews, has hinted at hidden hands in the industry, making cryptic references to an inner circle that makes decisions far beyond casting or contracts. And then there's Kanye West, whose public breakdowns often seem to spiral into wild rants about unseen power structures. While some dismiss his words as the product of a troubled mind, others believe Kanye has brushed against a terrifying truth, an invisible network that manipulates Hollywood's elite, keeping them in line through fear, control, and the ever-looming threat of being canceled or worse. In 2013, Kanye launched into one such tirade during a radio interview stating, you know, there's a lot of people who don't want me to say what I'm gonna say. I'm in a glass prison. There are people controlling the puppets. His speech veered into vague territory, but one part stood out. There's a powerful few controlling everything, Hollywood, the music industry, the media. You think it's just a coincidence. Some of Hollywood's most chilling rumors swirl around Marilyn Monroe, the blonde bombshell whose tragic life ended in mystery and whispers of conspiracy. Monroe was not just a screen siren. She was entangled with the highest powers in the country, including President John F. Kennedy. Her affair with JFK is well documented. But what is less widely known are the rumors that Monroe was involved in secret rituals practiced by the elite circles she found herself drawn into. Monroe's ties to the Kennedys, particularly to JFK and his brother, Robert Kennedy, placed her at the heart of a dangerous world where political power mixed with the occult. Several books and interviews with insiders from Monroe's time have suggested that she was aware of hidden rituals performed by these powerful men, rituals steeped in the practices of secret societies. Some even speculate that Monroe's tragic death was a result of her knowing too much, her silence enforced not by suicide, but by those who feared she might expose them. Perhaps the most startling claim comes from Peter Lawford, Monroe's close friend and brother-in-law to JFK. In his later years, Lawford confessed to being part of these secret gatherings and hinted that Monroe had been sacrificed to protect the Kennedy's involvement in occult practices. Lawford's confessions are unsettling, not just because of what they suggest about Monroe's death, but because they reveal a world where Hollywood's elite mingle with the most powerful figures in politics, both bound together by an unseen hand, the hand of secret societies. The eerie web extends even further with countless other celebrities, past and present, rumored to be involved in secret orders. From actors to musicians, many have spoken about hidden meetings, bizarre rituals, and the fear of stepping out of line. Some claim that Hollywood's most exclusive circles are a modern-day Babylon, where power is exchanged not just in boardrooms, but in secret lodges far from the public eye. The Freemasons, the Skull and Bones, the Illuminati, names that conjure visions of shadowy figures and forbidden knowledge. In Hollywood, these aren't just stories told by conspiracy theorists. Celebrities, those closest to the machine, have either deliberately or inadvertently revealed their connection to these hidden networks. For those who rise to the top of the industry, fame and fortune come at a price. The public face may smile for the cameras, but behind closed doors, they are bound to powers far greater and more terrifying than anything they portray on screen. There is something chilling about the way these secret societies operate, silently, subtly, yet always present. Their symbols are worn like badges of honor, their gestures passed off as meaningless handshakes or fashion statements. But make no mistake, there is nothing accidental about the presence of these occult elements. From the moment Johnny Depp uttered those cryptic words to the world, a veil was lifted ever so slightly, exposing a horrifying truth. The world's most powerful entertainers are not just performers. They are participants in an ancient game of control and influence. So, the next time you see a pyramid in a music video or an actor flashing a cryptic hand gesture, take a second look. What seems like innocent fun may be a small glimpse into a world that few of us will ever truly understand. A world where fame is fleeting, but power bound by secret oaths, lasts forever. Chapter 3. The Manson Family and the Hollywood Connection Hollywood, 
a land of glitz and glamour, took a dark and terrifying turn in the summer of 1969 when Charles Manson and his family unleashed a wave of terror that still haunts Tinseltown. The brutal murders of actress Sharon Tate and six others weren't just the work of a deranged cult leader. They carried with them chilling connections to the Hollywood elite and whispers of occult influences that lurked just beneath the surface. Behind Manson's wild eyes and apocalyptic prophecies were ties to some of the most influential figures in the entertainment world and the traces of dark, esoteric teachings that led to one of the most horrifying episodes in Hollywood history. The heart of the horror came on the night of August 8, 1969, when Charles Manson sent a group of his followers to the home of Roman Polanski, the celebrated filmmaker, and his wife, actress Sharon Tate. Tate, eight months pregnant, was brutally murdered along with four friends in one of the bloodiest killings Hollywood had ever seen. The scene, splattered with blood and marked by the word pig scrawled in crimson across the door, seemed like the act of a mindless cult, but there were darker forces at play. Manson's obsession with power and control, laced with occult teachings, had driven his followers to commit acts that defied human comprehension. At the time of her death, Sharon Tate was one of Hollywood's rising stars. Married to Roman Polanski, the director of Rosemary's Baby, a film notorious for its dark themes of Satanism and occult rituals, Tate's murder sent shockwaves through the film industry. Some speculated that Polanski's work on Rosemary's Baby, which was filmed in the Dakota Building, a site long rumored to have been frequented by occultists like Aleister Crowley, had invited dark energies into his life. The strange and eerie coincidences between the film and the subsequent tragedy left many in Hollywood unnerved. Manson himself had a direct connection to the Hollywood elite, thanks to his relationship with Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys. Wilson had met Manson and his followers in the spring of 1968, inviting them to live in his home for several months. During this time, Wilson introduced Manson to various music industry figures, including record producer Terry Melcher. Manson, who fancied himself a musician, was desperate for a recording contract. But when Melcher eventually distanced himself, Manson's resentment grew. The home where Tate and her friends were killed had once belonged to Melcher, a fact that has led many to believe that Manson was targeting him in a twisted act of revenge. But the terror Manson unleashed wasn't just the result of failed ambitions. He had steeped his followers in a toxic mixture of fringe ideologies, including Scientology and the teachings of the Oat Yo, an occult organization associated with Aleister Crowley. Manson's brief involvement with Scientology in the mid-1960s gave him a taste for control and manipulation, which he would later hone to perfection with his own cult. While Manson quickly dismissed Scientology, calling it a silly game, it was the esoteric teachings of the O.E.O. that fascinated him. Manson took Crowley's infamous motto, Do what thou wilt, to heart, twisting it into a justification for the acts of violence and chaos he would later order. Manson's teachings to his followers were laced with apocalyptic prophecies and occult symbolism. He convinced his family that he was the reincarnation of Jesus Christ and that a race war, which he dubbed Helter Skelter, was imminent. To prepare for this war, Manson preached a bizarre mixture of Nazi ideology, Christian apocalyptic visions, and occult teachings, all designed to isolate and control his followers. His delusions were fueled by a distorted interpretation of the Book of Revelation and the music of the Beatles, whose song Helter Skelter Manson believed contained hidden messages meant specifically for him. In Manson's twisted mind, the murders were a ritualistic act meant to ignite this apocalyptic war. The psychological impact of the Manson murders on Hollywood was immediate and profound. The entertainment industry, long a bastion of hedonism and excess, suddenly found itself gripped by fear and paranoia. Many of the city's most famous residents fled to fortified mansions or hired private security, convinced that they might be next. Rumors of more hidden cults and secret rituals swirled in the wake of the murders, with some believing that the Manson family was just one part of a larger, more insidious network lurking in the shadows of Hollywood. For Roman Polanski, the trauma was devastating. Just over a year earlier, he had directed Rosemary's Baby, a film about a young woman who was unknowingly drawn into a satanic cult. Now, in a horrific twist of fate, he found himself at the center of an actual occult murder. 
Polanski never fully recovered from Tate's death. And to this day, Rosemary's Baby remains one of the most cursed films in Hollywood history, with many believing that the film itself had invited dark forces into Polanski's life. Even now, there are those who whisper that Tate's murder was part of a larger occult ritual, one that extended far beyond the reach of Charles Manson. The ties between Manson and the Hollywood elite are unsettling, to say the least. While Manson was undoubtedly a charismatic cult leader, capable of manipulating and controlling his followers with terrifying precision, his access to Hollywood insiders like Dennis Wilson and Terry Melcher reveals a darker connection between fame and madness. Wilson, who later distanced himself from Manson, remained haunted by his time with the family. In interviews, Wilson spoke about how Manson's presence left a lasting mark on him, describing the cult leader as an unsettling figure with an almost supernatural ability to control those around him. To this day, the Manson family murders cast a long, dark shadow over Hollywood. The fear and paranoia they instilled have never truly gone away, and the sinister allure of Manson's connections to the occult continue to fascinate and terrify in equal measure. In the decades since the murders, Hollywood has never been able to shake the feeling that something darker lies beneath its polished surface, something that Manson, for all his madness, tapped into. Chapter 4, Aleister Crowley's Hollywood Legacy Hollywood's glimmering lights have long masked a fascination with the darker side of human nature, where fame, ambition, and mysticism collide. Amidst the glitz and glamour, there is one name whose shadow continues to loom over Tinseltown's elite. Aleister Crowley, the infamous British occultist whose teachings of magic have seduced some of the entertainment industry's most influential figures. Known as the wickedest man in the world, Crowley's legacy in Hollywood is one of esoteric rituals, secret knowledge, and a lasting influence on those who sought power beyond the material world. Crowley's impact on Hollywood, though subtle, is unmistakable. Though he only spent a brief period in Los Angeles in the early 20th century, his influence began to take root decades later, when the counterculture movement of the 1960s and 70s revived interest in his teachings. The fascination with Crowley's ideas of rebellion, individualism, and magic found a natural home among Hollywood's elite, who were eager to explore new spiritual avenues in their search for meaning and power. One such disciple of Crowley's work was filmmaker Kenneth Anger, whose dark and experimental films are drenched in occult symbolism. Anger's obsession with Crowley was more than artistic, it was deeply personal. Kenneth Anger, one of Hollywood's most notorious underground filmmakers, was not just influenced by Crowley's work. He was a devoted follower. Anger's films, such as Lucifer Rising and Invocation of My Demon Brother, are littered with occult imagery and themes of ritualistic magic that would make even the most seasoned Hollywood veteran shudder. Anger was a member of the Ordo Templi Orientis, the occult organization that Crowley once led, and he believed that cinema could serve as a powerful vehicle for summoning supernatural forces. Anger's connection to Hollywood in the 1960s and 70s placed him at the heart of the industry's experimental and occult-obsessed fringes, where his films attracted attention from figures like Mick Jagger and Marion Faithful, both of whom appeared in his dark, ritualistic projects. As Anger's films seeped into Hollywood's avant-garde, Another prominent figure immersed himself in Crowley's teachings, Jimmy Page, the legendary guitarist of Led Zeppelin. Page's fascination with Crowley went beyond admiration. In 1971, he purchased Bolskine House, Crowley's former residence on the shores of Loch Ness in Scotland, a place Crowley had used to perform complex magical rituals. Bolskine House was reputedly haunted by dark forces, as Crowley's rituals had allegedly summoned spirits that lingered long after his departure. Page's connection to Crowley and his purchase of the house fueled rumors that the guitarist was involved in occult practices. Page never shied away from discussing his admiration for Crowley, frequently referencing the occultist's famous maxim, do what thou wilt, in both his personal life and his music. The cover of Led Zeppelin's fourth album, often referred to as Zoso, contains cryptic symbols that many fans believe are inspired by Crowley's teachings. Page's fascination with the darker side of spirituality seeped into the band's public image, with rumors swirling that Led Zeppelin's success was not just the result of musical genius, but of magical intervention. 
Some whispered that Page had conducted rituals to ensure the band's success, while others believed that Bolskine House itself had cursed the band, leading to a series of tragic accidents and misfortunes that plagued its members. Hollywood's flirtation with Crowley's teachings extended beyond filmmakers and rock stars. In the 1970s, David Bowie, who was at the height of his fame, also delved into the occult. Bowie was deeply fascinated by Crowley's work and often referenced the occult in his music and personal life. During his thin, white Duke phase, Bowie's persona took on a darker, more mystical tone, with occult symbolism woven into his performances and lyrics. Songs like Quicksand contain direct references to Crowley, as Bowie sang of being closer to the Golden Dawn, a secretive occult society that Crowley had once been a part of. At the time, Bowie was battling personal demons, including severe drug addiction, and became increasingly paranoid about the influence of dark forces in his life. Bowie reportedly became obsessed with protection against what he believed to be supernatural threats. In interviews, he spoke of performing rituals to ward off evil spirits, and even claimed that his house in Los Angeles was haunted by a malevolent presence. His paranoia reached its peak when he began drawing protective pentagrams on the walls of his home, convinced that dark entities were after him. Though Bowie eventually distanced himself from these occult obsessions, his flirtation with Crowley's teachings left a lasting mark on his public image during this period of his career. But the story of Crowley's influence in Hollywood doesn't begin with anger, Page, or Bowie. It starts with Crowley himself. In the 1910s, Crowley made a brief but significant visit to Los Angeles, where he immersed himself in the bohemian circles of early Hollywood. Though his time in the city was short-lived, Crowley's presence left an indelible mark on the industry's burgeoning occult fascination. Hollywood in the early 20th century was a strange place, filled with eccentric personalities, spiritualists, and seekers of hidden knowledge. Crowley, with his larger-than-life persona and radical ideas, found himself welcomed by some of the city's more unconventional elites. Crowley's visit to Los Angeles may have been brief, but his influence lingered. The occultist became a symbol of rebellion and esoteric wisdom for those who sought something beyond the materialism of Hollywood. In the decades that followed, his teachings of magic would weave their way into the fabric of Hollywood culture, influencing not just filmmakers and musicians, but also the spiritual practices of those seeking to harness the powers of the unseen. Hollywood's obsession with Crowley's teachings continues to this day, with references to his work appearing in films, music videos, and fashion. His legacy in the entertainment industry is one of darkness and intrigue, a reminder that beneath the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, there is a fascination with the occult that persists to this day. The allure of Crowley's Do What Thou Will ethos has drawn some of the industry's most creative and influential figures into its fold, leaving behind a trail of esoteric symbols, strange rituals, and whispered rumors of power drawn from the shadows. Chapter 5. The Church of Satan and Celebrity Ties Hollywood, with its endless pursuit of fame and power, has long had a dark undercurrent, a place where ambition knows no bounds and the search for meaning often leads down strange, terrifying paths. Among these paths lies the Church of Satan, founded in 1966 by Anton Levy, a charismatic and controversial figure whose influence reached deep into the heart of Los Angeles. Though some dismiss Levy's teachings as a theatrical rebellion against conventional religion, the chilling reality is that his church attracted an array of powerful and glamorous figures. What began as an outsider movement soon found itself entangled with the upper echelons of Hollywood's elite, and the stories that emerge from this connection paint a haunting picture of occult rituals, dark alliances, and an obsession with satanic symbolism that still echoes today. At the center of this eerie world was Anton Levy himself, a self-proclaimed high priest of the Church of Satan. His imposing presence and magnetic personality drew people from all walks of life, including some of Hollywood's most recognizable stars. Levy became a pop culture figure in his own right, famously appearing in Roman Polanski's Rosemary's Baby, where he allegedly played the role of the devil in the film's disturbing ritual scene. While this casting may have been passed off as mere coincidence, many believe Levy's involvement was more than a clever cinematic trick. The film, 
saturated with themes of satanic ritual and occultism, became a cornerstone of the occult's resurgence in Hollywood. Levy's friendships with celebrities like Jane Mansfield and Sammy Davis Jr. fueled speculation about Hollywood's growing fascination with Satanism. Jane Mansfield, the blonde bombshell often described as the working man's Marilyn Monroe, became one of Levy's closest associates. Documented accounts and interviews with those who knew Mansfield paint a disturbing picture of her relationship with Levy. The two were frequently photographed together, and Mansfield is rumored to have dabbled in Levy's occult practices. Some reports even claim that she was a high-ranking member of the Church of Satan. Mansfield's involvement with Levy took a sinister turn when rumors spread that her life may have been cut short by a curse. In 1967, just months before her untimely death in a horrific car accident, it was said that Levy placed a curse on her then-boyfriend, attorney Sam Brody, after a series of public disagreements. Levy allegedly warned Brody that something terrible would happen if he continued to cross him. And soon after, the couple's car collided with a truck decapitating Mansfield and killing Brody instantly. Whether or not the curse was real, the eerie coincidence only deepened the legend of Levy's dark powers. Sammy Davis Jr., one of Hollywood's most beloved entertainers, was also drawn into Levy's web. In his autobiography, Davis admitted to attending parties hosted by Levy and participating in satanic ceremonies. While Davis initially approached the Church of Satan with skepticism, he later confessed to becoming intrigued by its philosophy of indulgence and self-gratification. The imagery of the goat-headed Baphomet, the ritualistic chants, and the theatricality of Levy's black masses fascinated Davis, who was eager to explore the taboo side of spirituality. Though he distanced himself from the church in his later years, Davis's brief foray into Satanism left a lasting stain on his public image. Perhaps the most chilling accounts come from Levy's own daughter, Zena Levy, who has spoken at length about her upbringing in the shadow of Hollywood's occult elite. Zena described her father as both a showman and a true believer, someone who used his connections in the entertainment industry to spread his gospel of Satanism. Growing up, Zena witnessed countless celebrities passing through their San Francisco home, where rituals and ceremonies were held in secrecy. According to Zena, Hollywood figures were not just curious onlookers, they were active participants in her father's satanic rites. In interviews, Zena recalled seeing actors and musicians drawn to Levy's teachings as they sought personal power and freedom from the moral constraints of mainstream society. Anton Levy's influence extended far beyond his inner circle of followers. In the late 1960s and 70s, satanic imagery began to permeate Hollywood's music and film industries. Bands like Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and the Rolling Stones incorporated occult symbols and dark themes into their music, while horror films such as The Omen and The Exorcist brought satanic panic to the forefront of popular culture. Levy himself contributed to this cultural shift, promoting Satanism as a symbol of rebellion against authority and traditional religion. His philosophy of self-indulgence and individualism resonated with a generation of artists who were eager to push the boundaries of societal norms. As the Church of Satan gained notoriety, so too did the rumors of darker, more insidious activities behind the scenes. Witnesses and former members of the church have spoken of secret rituals held in the Hollywood Hills, where wealthy and powerful individuals would gather to participate in satanic rites. These gatherings were said to include blood sacrifices, orgiastic rituals, and invocations of demonic forces. While many of these accounts remain shrouded in mystery, there is no denying that the Church of Satan attracted a following among Hollywood's elite, who were drawn to the allure of forbidden knowledge and occult power. One of the most unsettling aspects of Levy's legacy is the way in which satanic imagery has become almost normalized in modern pop culture. In the decades following Levy's rise to prominence, symbols like the inverted pentagram, the goat-headed Baphomet, and the all-seeing eye have become common motifs in music videos, films, and fashion. Celebrities like Marilyn Manson, Lady Gaga, and even Beyonce have been accused of promoting occult symbols in their work, fueling conspiracy theories that Hollywood is still under the influence of satanic ideologies. Whether or not these accusations hold any weight, 
The fact remains that Levy's vision of Satanism as a form of countercultural rebellion has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. As the stories of Anton Levy's connections to Hollywood continue to circulate, one can't help but feel a sense of unease. The Church of Satan, once dismissed as a fringe movement, has infiltrated the very heart of popular culture. Its teachings of indulgence, power, and the rejection of moral authority have found a home in the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, where ambition often overshadows morality. In the end, the ties between Levy and Hollywood's elite serve as a chilling reminder that the pursuit of fame and power can lead even the brightest stars into the darkest of places. Chapter 6, Rituals and Sacrifices, Dark Rumors Surrounding Hollywood Deaths Hollywood is no stranger to tragedy. Behind the glittering facade of fame and fortune lies a history steeped in darkness, where rumors of occult rituals and mysterious deaths continue to haunt the industry. Some of the most well-known stars, whose lives ended in tragedy, have had their deaths clouded by whispers of something more sinister, a world where fame comes at a price, and that price may be paid with blood. One of the most eerie examples is the case of Brittany Murphy. Known for her roles in films like Clueless and Eight Mile, Murphy's sudden and unexpected death in December 2009 shocked the world. The official cause was listed as pneumonia, anemia, and drug intoxication, but almost immediately, rumors began swirling about darker forces at play. Murphy had been outspoken about feeling watched and threatened in the months leading up to her death. Her paranoia only deepened when her husband, Simon Monjack, also died mysteriously just five months later, under nearly identical circumstances. While authorities deemed both deaths natural, the close timing of their demise raised suspicions. Some believe the couple had become entangled in Hollywood's darker, occult corners. Certain conspiracy theories point to Murphy's outspoken criticism of powerful figures in the industry, speculating that her death was no accident, but rather a ritual sacrifice disguised as an illness. In a bizarre twist, a report from the LA County Coroner's Office suggested toxic mold in their home could have played a role, but others argue that it was all a cover-up for something far more chilling. Heath Ledger's death in 2008 sent shockwaves through Hollywood, but it wasn't long before rumors of an occult connection began to surface. Ledger's portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight was both iconic and terrifying, but some argue that the role came with a curse. Ledger had thrown himself fully into the character, locking himself in a hotel room for weeks, experimenting with dark thoughts and method acting. According to friends, he had begun experiencing disturbing nightmares, and his mental state deteriorated rapidly. In interviews leading up to his death, Ledger himself described the Joker as a psychopathic, mass-murdering clown with zero empathy, a role that haunted him. Some insiders believe that Ledger's deep dive into the Joker's chaotic mind opened him up to dark forces. They point to strange occurrences on set, accidents, and whispers of occult rituals performed as part of the production's push for realism. Ledger's sudden death from an accidental overdose of prescription medication fueled theories that the role had cursed him, a ritualistic price for embodying such a dark and chaotic force. His untimely passing, coupled with rumors of satanic symbolism in Hollywood, led to chilling speculation that Ledger had become a victim of an occult ritual. Then there's River Phoenix, the promising young actor who seemed destined for greatness before his life was tragically cut short outside Johnny Depp's Viper Room in 1993. The official story is that Phoenix died from a drug overdose, but those close to him described a darker influence that had crept into his life. In the months leading up to his death, Phoenix had become increasingly withdrawn and was reportedly fascinated by the occult. Friends recall strange conversations where Phoenix would talk about death, rebirth, and forces beyond his control. The night Phoenix died, there were whispers of an occult ritual being performed in the club. Some witnesses described a strange, almost otherworldly atmosphere, with cryptic symbols scrawled on the walls and mysterious figures lurking in the shadows. While no direct evidence of an occult connection was ever found, the eerie coincidences and the strange behavior of those present led many to believe that Phoenix's death was more than just a tragic overdose. Rumors of an underground Hollywood cult with ties to the occult 
persisted long after Phoenix's passing. Brandon Lee, son of martial arts legend Bruce Lee, suffered a similar fate. In 1993, while filming The Crow, Lee was accidentally shot and killed by a faulty prop gun. The official cause of death was ruled an accident, but those close to the production couldn't shake the feeling that something darker was at play. The set of The Crow was plagued by mishaps, injuries, and accidents, leading to speculation that the film itself was cursed. Lee's death mirrored the strange and sudden death of his father, who had also died under mysterious circumstances. Some claim that the Lee family was the target of an ancient curse, possibly tied to their fame and influence in Hollywood. Others believe that Brandon Lee's death was a ritualistic sacrifice, part of a larger occult conspiracy within the industry. The film's dark themes of revenge, death, and resurrection only added fuel to the fire. As with Heath Ledger and The Dark Knight, some insiders believe that Lee's role in The Crow may have invited dark forces that ultimately led to his untimely demise. But perhaps the most chilling aspect of these Hollywood deaths are the first-hand accounts from insiders who claim to have witnessed rituals and ceremonies before or after these tragedies. Several former Hollywood assistants and insiders have come forward over the years, sharing cryptic stories of parties that devolved into satanic rites, with celebrities chanting incantations and performing blood rituals. One such insider, who worked on the set of a major blockbuster in the 90s, described a secret ritual held in the Hollywood Hills after a prominent actor's death. According to the source, those present wore dark robes, chanting around a fire, invoking spirits in the actor's name. Another account from a former personal assistant to a well-known director described an eerie gathering at a secluded mansion where A-list stars gathered to honor a recently deceased celebrity. The assistant recalled symbols carved into the floor, strange symbols drawn in ash, and a ritual involving candles, blood, and chanting. While no direct evidence of these rituals has ever surfaced, the stories are enough to send a chill down anyone's spine. Hollywood's relationship with death has always been shrouded in mystery. But the darker rumors of occult rituals, sacrifices, and curses only deepen the sense of unease surrounding the deaths of some of its most beloved stars. Whether these deaths were the result of tragic accidents or something more sinister, the legacy of their passing lingers like a shadow over Hollywood, a constant reminder that fame and fortune often come at a cost. Chapter 7. Occult Rituals and Award Shows and Music Videos the grand stages of Hollywood's biggest events, award shows, music videos, and halftime spectacles are often seen as celebrations of creativity, fame, and cultural achievement. Yet, beneath the glittering lights and carefully choreographed performances, some believe that a darker, more sinister force lurks in plain sight. For decades, whispers of occult rituals hidden within the theatrical splendor of Hollywood's most prestigious events have persisted, with many pointing to disturbing patterns of symbolism, eerie performances, and the deliberate use of esoteric imagery. Take, for instance, the Grammy Awards. Throughout its history, the Grammys have hosted some of the most provocative and controversial performances in entertainment, but it was during the 2014 show that the murmurs of occult influence grew louder than ever. Katy Perry, one of the night's biggest stars, took to the stage for a chilling rendition of her song, Dark Horse. The performance was rife with occult imagery. Perry, dressed as a witch, danced around a flaming pole while shadowy figures cloaked in black robes circled her. Some observers immediately connected the visuals to ancient occult rituals involving fire and witchcraft, claiming that the performance was a thinly veiled reference to summoning dark forces. Critics were quick to dismiss these allegations, chalking it up to artistic expression. But for those who had long been watching for signs, this was not a coincidence. Then there was Madonna's performance during the 2015 Grammy Awards, which drew even more attention for its overt occult symbolism. Clad in a blood-red outfit adorned with devil horns, Madonna was lifted by a group of masked dancers as she performed her song, Living for Love. The imagery was unmistakable, horned figures symbolic of demonic entities, dancing in ritualistic formation. The performance culminated with Madonna being symbolically sacrificed, lifted into the air as though offered to some unseen force. For those versed in occult symbolism, 
the message was clear. This was a ritual performance, staged for millions to witness, hidden in plain sight under the guise of entertainment. But these aren't isolated incidents. In recent years, the Super Bowl halftime show, one of the most watched events on television, has become another focal point for those tracking occult imagery in Hollywood. In 2015, Katy Perry's halftime show was rife with symbolic references. Her entrance, atop a giant mechanical lion, was said to represent the beast from the Book of Revelation, and the checkerboard stage beneath her feet mirrored the floors found in Masonic lodges. While some saw it as an elaborate show of spectacle, others were convinced that the performance was part of a larger, ritualistic display of power by those in Hollywood's highest circles. The Super Bowl stage has been no stranger to such allegations. Madonna's 2012 halftime show also attracted widespread attention for its occult undertones. Draped in regal robes and flanked by soldiers dressed like Roman centurions, Madonna's performance was described as a coronation, some said of herself as a high priestess of Hollywood's secret occult elite. She was joined on stage by dancers who formed occult symbols, including the all-seeing eye, a frequent motif in conspiracy theories about secret societies. Throughout the show, Madonna's movements seemed to mimic the rituals of ancient mystery schools, leading some to believe that they were witnessing not just a performance, but an actual occult ceremony, carried out in front of an unsuspecting audience. Beyond the grand stages of award shows and halftime spectacles, the world of music videos has also been a breeding ground for occult imagery. One of the most notable examples is Kanye West's 2010 music video for Runaway. The video, which features Kanye as a conductor of a bizarre, ritualistic ballet, is filled with esoteric symbolism. From the phoenix, a symbol of rebirth in occult traditions that accompanies West throughout the video, to the strange, dark lighting and the ritualistic behavior of the dancers, some see Runaway as an artistic representation of an occult initiation. West himself has alluded to hidden power structures in Hollywood, frequently speaking about secret societies and control. In a 2016 concert rant, he boldly declared, I know there's secret societies. I know there's demons. Lady Gaga has also drawn significant attention for her use of occult symbolism in both her performances and music videos. Known for her eccentric fashion choices and cryptic public statements, Gaga has embraced imagery that some argue is rooted in occult traditions. Her 2009 music video for Bad Romance features a bizarre, ritualistic scene in which Gaga is sold to a group of men, an act some have interpreted as symbolic of ritual sacrifice. In another performance, Gaga emerged from an egg-shaped vessel, a symbol that some believe represents rebirth in occult rituals. Gaga has often been accused of channeling esoteric concepts through her music and art, and for those who believe in the occult undercurrents of Hollywood, she is seen as one of the key figures promoting hidden agendas. Eyewitness accounts from those involved in the production of these events and music videos provide chilling confirmation for believers of these theories. Several former production assistants and stagehands have come forward with eerie stories about the behind-the-scenes atmosphere during these shows. One assistant who worked on a Grammy performance involving elaborate occult imagery described how the entire crew was instructed not to question the symbolism used in the performance. There were strange rituals happening backstage, things I couldn't explain, the assistant recalled shuddering. We were told to ignore it, to pretend like it was all just part of the show, but it didn't feel right. Others who have worked on Super Bowl halftime shows have shared similar stories, recounting instances where event coordinators specifically requested the inclusion of symbols like the all-seeing eye, inverted pentagrams, and other occult motifs. One set designer for a major halftime performance noted how the producers would insist on certain elements being included, even if they seemed out of place. It wasn't just about the performance, the designer revealed. It felt like there was something deeper, something ritualistic that had to happen on that stage. In recent years, several event coordinators and insiders have spoken anonymously about the symbolic acts woven into Hollywood's biggest events. One well-known event planner who worked on several high-profile award shows admitted that many of the performances were meticulously crafted to include occult references. These are not just random choices, they explained. There are people in power who believe in these symbols and want them displayed. 
It's part of a larger agenda that most people don't even realize they're witnessing. As these stories and performances continue to surface, one thing becomes clear. The line between entertainment and ritual has blurred in Hollywood's most high-profile events. To many, these staged rituals are no mere coincidence. They are a display of power, a declaration of control, and a chilling reminder that in Hollywood, nothing is ever as it seems. The chilling connections, secretive rituals, and unsettling symbols we've uncovered serve as a stark reminder that the price of fame often involves delving into realms beyond our comprehension. But now, the power is in your hands. What do you believe? Have you noticed the signs lurking in plain sight? I invite you to share your thoughts, experiences, and insights in the comments. Join the conversation and let your voice be heard. If this journey has sparked your curiosity, Share this book with others who are ready to confront the hidden horrors of Hollywood.